Chief um, CIC Gilas Seloma Lema, officials of the EFF, uh, commissars, fighters, ground forces. My name is Sianyolu. I am a member of the EFF Students Command, Central Students Command team. Um, now, before we go into our topic, I just want to state that South Africa's constitution was the first in the world to protect people from discrimination because of their sexual orientation. And South Africa happens to be the first country in Africa to legalize same-sex marriage. However, it is also South Africa that has a, a high femicide rate, and it's also South Africa that has a high number of killings of um, LGBTQI um, people. So as much as there is some um, progress in addressing um, challenges faced by members of the LGBTQI community, there's also a long way that we need to go in addressing hate crime. Now to give you a picture of um, what I'm talking about, I just want to name a few um, LGBTQI people and um, human rights activists who have died in the hands of um, homophobia and hate crime. Matsidiso, who's known as Pasco, a lesbian woman from Everton in Johannesburg was killed and her body found mutilated at a nearby field. Unokolo Nukwaza, a lesbian and LGBTQ rights activist, was raped, stoned, and stabbed to death in Guatemala in Gauteng. Um, Jamie Davids, an openly queer and um, popular drag queen around the Western Cape, was murdered in Athlone in Cape Town. Um, Narempela, I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. Narempela, a transgender activist, was found murdered in Limpopo. Lindogutle, a popular musician in KwaZulu Natal, was stabbed in broad daylight. Smangali Sotiasi, a gay man, was shot dead in his home in Soweto in Gauteng. Um, member of the LGBTQI community and also a sex worker. Alma Robin Monsuni died in police custody in Cape Town under unexplained and confusing circumstances. She died in police custody. Um, Poshi um, Twin, a 25-year-old lesbian, um, was raped and her body mutilated in Tiofontaine in Pumalanga. Um, Kervan Fontaine, an internationally recognized queer dancer and choreographer from the Western Cape, also was stabbed by a 14 year old girl during an argument that was sparked by a homophobic comment that was said by the, the 14 year old. Upumeza Ngolonzi, also a lesbian woman, was shot in a home in Nyanga, also in Cape Town. Tapelo Makute was 24 and had won Miss Gay Pageant 
in his hometown of Kuruman in the Northern Cape. He was shot by two unidentified men after an argument over his um, sexuality. Now, the reason why I, I'm, I'm talking to you guys about um, you know, these cases is because these are things that we are subjected to every year. And these are things that members of the LGBTQI community are afraid of on a daily basis. So even though uh, some of us are still alive, there are many um, queer individuals who carry scars and are battered, you know, because of, of homophobic crimes. And as, as, as a society and as an organization, we need to then pave a way forward as to how do we then deal um, radically with these kinds of, 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 of murders. So for those who have just joined us, um, welcome and thank you once again for tuning into the EFF Gender Based Days series. Today we are discussing the challenges um, faced by members of the LGBTQI community and we are trying to find ways in which we can tackle these things um, as a society. Now the acronym LGBTQIAP stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, asexual, and pansexual. Um, previous episode of this GBV death series has spoken on various issues which are in kind of way interconnected. Um, Commissar Popi has spoken on um, domestic violence. Commissar Susan Tembegwai has spoken on child molestation. Um, Commissar Sharon spoke on femicide. Um, Commissar Mbali Glamini spoke on rape and um, EFF member of parliament and fighter um, Naledi Cherwa recently spoke on sex works. And all these videos are available on our Facebook and YouTube channel. Please do check them out. Um, they're quite interesting and informative. Like what I said earlier on, um, all these issues are interconnected, right? So what do I mean by that? When, when, when we have um, in this series a, 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 an episode on rape, that does not necessarily mean that um, you know, rape only affects um, heterosexual people. Like what I said previously that we have a serious culture of, of, of rape culture that also affects um, LGBTQI people, you know, who are raped just because of their um, sexual orientation. And, and, and also in the, in the LGBTQI community, what is something that we often don't speak about is intimate partner violence, where we, we, we often um, don't take seriously the issue of um, gay men beating each other, lesbian women fighting amongst each other, bisexual couples fighting together. And same applies in police stations where you are told, and there's this uh, kind of, you know, violence amongst me. Or in gay couples as well, like, it's not taken as a matter of intimate partner violence in, um, in, in police stations. And also another thing that we often don't talk about is, you know, the, the unfair treatment of, 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 of queer people and trans people in, in activist spaces where you find that cisgender people often, you know, dominate the conversation that has to do with um, the LGBTQI community. And we have to talk about the boundaries between, um, you know, being an ally as a cisgender person, as well as the relationship dynamics between queer, trans, and, and as cisgender politics um, within our activist spaces. But we'll touch onto that as we as we go into this conversation. So in my panel today, I'm with um, you know I have a variety of people. I have artists, I have writers, um, members of parliament, which I want us to go straight into. I won't introduce you. Please introduce yourselves because I feel like I won't give you any justice. You know, you are great women who have done so much in politics and in your spaces. So I will start with, um, let's start with you, Commissar Yoli. Um, please welcome and um, please introduce yourself. Um, thank you very much, Sia. Um, first of all, I am a mother of two. I'm a partner to a, another woman. I am a CCT member. 
I am a war council member in head of employees in the Northern Cape. Um, I'm a, also a member of parliament um, assigned to international, um, not international relations, but uh, trading industry, as well as an alternate injustice and correctional services. So that is what I do in terms of my profession. Um, as a person, I am a woman who loves other women, uh, friendly. Um, I love to read books. I love to read fiction. Um, I'm basically a flower child, if you may call it that. Thank you. Thanks, Commissar. Um, thank you very much. Let's move to um, Tulu. Let's go. Please introduce yourself, Tulu. Thank you so much, Sia. My name is Tulu Manga Michelin Gasela. Um, I am an activist and an artist, mostly a writer. Um, <laughs> yo, I've done a lot. I've done a lot. But I'm currently a member of the provincial interim structure in the Western Cape. Um, of their student command. And um, yeah, I am currently um, starting off the ground a space, an artist space for, for queer bodies. Um, I am a body positivist, uh, positivity activist. I'm a sex positivity activist. Um, and yeah, I am a queer pansexual woman. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tulu. And then finally, we have Amanda Nobo. Um, greetings, everyone. My name is Amanda Mapoloba. Um, I'm a medical student at UCT and a former deputy chairperson of the UCT EFF Student Command. I am an activist and a feminist. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Amanda. Um, thank you guys again for, 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 for accepting this invitation and being part of this um, important discussion. Uh, let me go straight to you, Commissar. In the EFF manifesto, it states, and I quote, um, an EFF government will amend the Criminal Law Amendment Act and existing legislation to include harsher minimum sentences for corrective rape, specifically or crimes committed with hatred as a motivation in general. Now, Commissar, you know, it is, it is very uh, an important uh, amendment because uh, it speaks to the issue of rape. You know, can you tell us, you know, for those who, 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 who are not that much familiar with the EFF manifesto as to why is it important that a government has harsher minimum sentences for corrective rape and hate crimes? Um, I'm not sure if you want me to be diplomatic, um, Sia, uh, uh, Fata Sia, or if you want me to be um, as blunt as I can, um, as a member of parliament, as a CCT member, because I feel like this space allows us to negotiate, to speak, to correct and to be honest about the space that we're in as far as fighters, as far as, far as we are commissars, as far as uh, we are Africans and South Africans. So um, I'm not sure where you want me to go. If you want me to be diplomatic, I can. If you want me to be- well, I'm not uh, sure if it's just me or is African. Commissar Yoli's network. Is it the bad? other one also struggling to hear Commissar Yoli? I can hear her clearly. I also can hear her clearly. I need you, Sia, to say if you want me to be as diplomatic as I can be, or if you want me to speak as a queer woman existing in a space of politics.
Okay, so that means we need to wait for her to come back, right? Oh, there she is. Hi, Sia, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 I'm back. Sorry, guys, it was network, man. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, 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 perfectly. So at first I was saying that, do you want me to speak to you in a diplomatic manner um, that befits a member of parliament, or do you want me to speak to you as a fighter, woman, lesbian, as I would call myself, um, in a space of politics, in a space that is surrounded by people? Yeah. Uh, do you want me to be, I don't know. Uh, so you no, need to... I you which way you want me to speak to. So if you want me to speak as a commissar, I can do that. Um, but if you want me to speak to you as a leader, as well as a member of parliament, uh, as a member of the EFF, uh, and as a lesbian woman who I would identify as at the moment, you need to tell me right now, and then I can proceed with that. Please, please speak as a lesbian woman, commissar. Thank you. Um, I think if I would speak as a lesbian woman, I would say that um, we're very much understood. We're very much understood by our own people, which saddens me very much. Um, I would want to say that um, South Africans, Africans, African males to be, and, and, and mostly African women even, um, do not understand what it is to love uh, another woman, a same sex relationship whether you're loving another woman, whether you're loving another man. I think South Africa needs a lot of education when it comes to same-sex relationship. I think South African men need to understand when a woman has been with a man and then thus moves to a relationship with a same-sex partner, what that means. It doesn't mean that you're disappointed by men. It doesn't mean that you are craving something that is in you've never had before. It just means that you're in love with somebody who happens to have genitalia that is the same as yours. Um, we face a lot of hate crime. Uh, we face a lot of prejudice. We face a lot of homophobia. Um, and we face a lot of people who decide not to educate themselves um, when it comes to sexuality when it comes to even their own sexuality. Um, women who don't, women and men who don't even understand why it is that they like women, why it is that they like men. And those people then project that onto us. And it's a really bad space to be in, um, especially as a leader, because then it, it puts you in a position where people sort of try to undermine you, um, uh, by your voice. So the fact that you would speak, people think that you want them. Uh, the fact that you would speak to women, those women would think that you want them and then that's not the case. Um, people would say that you're the people's bay and you're not the people's women's bay because you're not women's bay. You're just somebody who just some happens to like women uh, or a woman. Um, so there's a lot to uncover when it comes to um, queer relationships. And I think that there's a lot that we need to do as the EF um, to, 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 to deal and to educate and to transform the idea of what it is to be queer. And um, even people you would think our leaders do not read the manifesto of the EFF, which speaks about uh, the fact that we are pro queer marriages, we are pro queer relationships, we are pro queer lives, you are pro transgendered lives. People do not know that. So there's a lot of things that at times you are burdened with as a leader in the EFF, which you shouldn't be because people should know read and should understand the fact that by the fact that uh, they are EFF members, they subscribe to a certain thought, a certain life, a certain understanding of what it is to be an EFF member. So um, that's my contribution for now. Thanks, thanks, Commissar. 
Um, you know, Commissar, you spoke about a very important about education, you know, and, uh, and, and, and learning and reading, which is very important because, uh, like you said, uh, many people don't read certain sections of the, the manifesto. Let me quickly move to um, uh, Faita, Faita Kulu, ne? who is an activist in her own right. Um, Kulu, I want you to speak to us more about like the importance of, 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 of intersectionality in activist spaces. Can you please take us through um, what does um, you know, intersectionality look like in, in the revolutionary movements? Thank you so much, Sia. Um, I, I think a lot of what I'm going to be speaking on is going to tie a lot with what Yoli was speaking on. Um, because I personally, I today, I didn't come on this wearing any EFF regalia because um, I, I needed to express as a queer woman and as a queer woman who has led in the student command, right? I needed to express how it should be and how I envision it to be for queer people um, in the EFF. And first and foremost, intersectionality will never work if, it was, if it's only just on paper, which I feel is currently what is happening in our movement. I'm not going to speak generally about other movements or other organizations right because i feel organizations that i've been part of which are in particular ngos have done way better in terms of accommodating queer people than the eff and it is not that policies of the eff do not and documentation of the eff do not accommodate queer people they do but the problem is that members of the eff do not accommodate queer people thus then not following policy and documentation of, of the movement. You know, this is, for me personally, this is the first ever dialogue I've seen done by the EFF on, on queer bodies, right? And I was even very reluctant to join the conversation because I felt that reintroducing the conversation of intersectionality so wrong in the movement and in speaking about it and in, the, in educating each other, because we've almost as queer people become a subtopic to gender-based violence. We have become a byproduct of violence, so much so that we only speak of queer people when we speak of gender-based violence and femicide. We only speak of queer people when there's violence involved. There's no one that's ever interested to just speak about queer people and be like, what it is to be queer? What do the letters stand for? What do the letters mean? You know. Um, what are your pronouns? Even when we started this conversation, I thought of saying my pronouns as she, her, and in actual fact, you can call me by whatever pronoun because I, I am not constricted by the binary um, of gender. But those are things that no one seems to be interested in the EFF, which is why you have two members of parliament who will go and vote against what our policy speaks on and accepts because we, we have completely ignored queer people, so much so that we only speak of them on paper and practically we don't do anything about it. And for me, intersectionality, for, for the EFF in particular, it looks like that. It is practicality. It is educating people practically in the same way that we are going to have conversations, we're going to have popular education sessions on the pedagogy of the oppressed or the manifesto or whatever we usually have. We need to have on, on queer theory, right? And it should not be a byproduct of something else because as queer people, we're people that exist and are in the EFF and that contribute in the EFF and are not a byproduct of anything. Firstly, that's what intersectionality looks for me in the EFF. Secondly, there's, there's just a, a lot of hate, right? Towards queer people generally now, not only just speaking about the EFF, there's just generally a lot of hate and not understanding queer people, right? And I, I always say that I understand that Korean is a language, even though I don't speak it, but I know it's a language and it exists. So in as much as you may not understand queer people, you might not know what queerness is and what it entails, you know that it's there and it exists. And at many a times than not, it is up to us then as, as the organization to teach our people. Because 
in as much as it can be annoying, the responsibility to teach always lies with those who know. And the most messed up thing is that you know, right? And you live um, this life, right? But at the same time, as the person who is abused and who is abhorred because of the life that you live, you still have to teach these people, the very same people that express these kinds of things and all kinds of hate towards you. And ours will always be to teach. No matter how angered we are, it will always be to teach. And that is what intersectionality looks like to me, to teach, to know that when we speak of land, of the land question, we know that the, the queer community is involved. When we speak of um, the, 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 the social security grants, people who are queer are involved. When we speak of gender-based violence, queer people are involved in almost anything, in fact, not even almost, in everything that we speak of, queer people are involved. Because when we speak of housing, it's not that queer people don't need housing. They do. We need safe spaces, right? Which is why, personally, I would be very happy to see an EFF flag at a pride rally. Because there's never even once in the existence of the EFF have I ever seen the EFF, just purely because of policy, release a statement on the 1st of June and say, happy pride. And those that have attempted have gotten backlash for that. But remember, and, there are pride, there are pride, uh, there are pride politics. So we need to create our own pride politics. Which, exactly. Yes, which then speaks to our pride politics as black queer women. That would then say, this is our pride as the EFF women. And that is exactly what intersectionality looks like for the EFF. It should be practical. It should be enacted, not only something that exists in policy in a perfect document that's stacked away. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kulu, uh, on that uh, very informative. Uh, before you go, I understand you have to leave in 15 minutes. Né? Um, please take us through, like, uh, what do you want, uh, you know, I understand you are part of the student command, and uh, how do you, do you think that in our activism, you know, as young students, we've included the struggles. I know we've gone back to Fees Must Fall and Roads Must Fall and all the decolonial projects that we have. As, as, as student activists and student leaders, do you think that we've done justice to the LGBTQI community? Uh, I, I don't think we have, not even remotely. Um, like I said, when we are involved in whatever kind of resistance, at the fore, women will resist and say that we, we need to be recognized, we need this, we need that. Right, rightfully so also, because that's another marginalized group. But in all of that, you never find that in particular, queer people are considered in any way. Um, we, 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 in generally in any kind of resistance now as young people, um, we, we organize discussions, for example, the bathrooms, things, small things like that really. We never consider to even ask what are your pronouns. You see a person who by societal norms and by heteronormative norms, they would be a male. You start referring to them as, ah, this, this guy, this, that, this, that, right? In our spaces, no one ever bothers to ask you what are your pronouns. Even when you do say my pronouns are this and that, and people feel that your pronouns don't go with your appearance, it will be something to laugh about. I remember, um, this is not in particular uh, an EFF thing or a student command thing. I remember last year during youth parliament, we had to waste a whole 30 minutes addressing the fact that they were refusing to call someone by their pronouns. And youth parliament is smack bang in the middle of June and June is also pride month. And so I, I, I was just appalled by the fact that when a person speaks about a matter of their identity, a matter of who they are, we think that it's something to, to, to laugh about. It's okay to laugh about. And most would always be like, no man, they come from a different generation, different times, but it was young people just like you and me who come from this time, this time that is sensitized to queer bodies and the kind of abuses that queer bodies face. But 
people still could not be able to call people by their pronouns. So I feel even in our spaces, the very little things that we need in order for us to be inclusive of gender queer people, of generally just queer people. It's, it's just those little things for us that we need to acknowledge and to, to, to learn about also, because it is also about the willingness to learn because you may not understand something as a member of the EFF, but it is important for you to learn just in the same way that many of us, when we joined the EFF, we did not know Paulo Ferreira, we did not know Bo Karl Marx, we did not know Bo Lenin, but we came into the EFF and we learned because we had the sheer will to learn because we wanted to know, right? And we wanted to make sure that we fit the bill of what it is to be an EFF member, we wanted to fit the bill of what it is to be a fighter. And so I don't understand then why it will never be the same when it comes to women issues and queer issues that we also want to fit the bill of what it is to be a fighter or an EFF member. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to like you gave us a lot to carry on talking about. Even when you leave, I think we'll carry on engaging on some of the very important points you make. Thank you so much. Kulu Kulu is an activist. She's an artist, uh, body positivist. Um, she's part of the student command at CPUT. And just someone that I, I learned a lot, a lot and a lot from. So she's also there. She's also the what, Sisi Sub 200,000 people. Uh, yes! So she's there. She's yours. I always, I always forget about that. My people always <laughs> fight me over that. Nah, thank you so much, Kun. Um, Let's go to Amanda. Amanda, Shem, you've been very quiet. It's been the three of us speaking. Amanda, you know, I remember in my in my second year né, at the Rhodes, I, I had to do a project for radio. So I'm a journalism student. So in the project, we had to talk about like the most difficult thing that you encountered in your first year or like a most difficult thing that you've gone through in varsity. And I spoke about how it was difficult for me to be in a girls only race because most of the time uh, people will, you know, misgender me or people will look at me strangely like, is this a boy or a girl? The voice, my voice will consume some people. And basically my topic was around, you know, how the institutional culture and, and certain facilities in universities are actually, um, you know, not accommodative towards people of the LGBT QI um, community. Do you think that the reason why this institutional culture and the homophobia in universities, is it because, um, you know, there's the lack of political will from our VCs and our senior management to speak to issues of the LGBTQI community? Or do you think that, uh, you know, it's a matter of we are not raising enough awareness about these things? I mean, these are institutions of higher learning. They are intellectual spaces. We can't be talking about gender neutral facilities to, to professors and doctors. Surely it's, it's something that is supposed to be there in our institutions. Um, thank you so much, Sia. Yeah, I have been listening very attentively uh, and yeah, I, I got a lot of points from Sisioli and also from Tulu and thank you for that. So um, for me, I don't think that the issue of, of, of the, the institutional uh, space not being inclusive of the queer community is because there the, the hasn't been enough um, conversations and then uh, and that's they haven't been raising enough points for them to be the, to be aware of, of the issues i think they are very much aware of the issues that the lgbtqi community is facing and they are very much they are very much aware of what um of how much the institution is not is not uh inclusive of, of in, in in terms of gender I think they are deliberately ignoring it and they are putting it aside and they are not prioritizing it enough. The problem here is the priority. Now, I mean, as you have said that you, you had a problem when we we're in a, 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 a female race only. It, it happens in all institutions. I mean, they are aware that 
people there are people who are gender who are not conforming to gender and there are people who are who are, um, who are queer but still there's this um segregation of gender within the university for example in, in uct I, I don't i personally don't think that uct is doing enough to make sure that the space is very inclusive of the queer community i mean i know two i know two um gender neutral bathrooms that are only at upper campus other campuses have nothing like that and in terms of the conversations as well i feel like the conversations um Considering the fact that yes, in institutions of higher learning are an intellectual space, and they are where you expect people to know more about such issues and to be much aware of what happening in the society as large. But there's an issue of people coming from different backgrounds. As we know that most people who come to varsity come to varsity with fixed ideas of 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 what of what gender gender is. So when they come with these ideas of, of what gender is, it, 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 they, they, it's the university's duty and also the duty of us as student activists or, 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 or as student um, leaders to make sure that we create spaces that are able to sensitize people at, a, at, a, at, a, at an early stage when, when they come to varsity. You know, when, when I was, I was um, a transformation representative in one of in, in in my in one of the residences that I stayed with, I I I we had a conversation about gender, gender pronouns, and um just like we're speaking about intersectionality, about like the women abuse and you know and rape and stuff. And I find out that the people were so clueless on on, on what was going on. They couldn't understand what the, the people need to be um people prefer different pronouns you know and we had the same problem that's Tulu is saying that he people are stubborn like you come to a person and tell them that i want to be referred to as a, a she or he and then they'll be like why yeah but, and they, they constantly want people who um who, who, who are part of the queer community to constantly explain themselves why and how you know so i had a problem it's it, it's 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 it just it's most of the time guys but women do as well have this thing that i come from this background i was told at home that there's a, a female and a male and there's nothing else that i want to hear so we also have that problem of 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 of, of people being very close-minded you know so and and when i introduced that i wanted to do that transformative um workshop it was a matter of uh, no you can't teach first year about consist on a, a content on their first week of of university it's overloading it's a lot and whatnot and whatnot you know but then when they get to varsity they get taught who is who what is what what do they do they get taught about the the the, the management they get taught about the student leaders and whoever and whoever you know which are things that they can eventually find out about in the in the process of them being a first year but when i introduced it to the to the to the structure that i was part of as a matter of fact you are overloading students they they don't have enough information but i felt like that it was very informative although there's people who are very very quiet but it brings up conversations so I think that one thing that we need to focus on is to make sure that we bring up conversations within the institution as student activists as well as as student leaders, you know, because if uh, uh, the, the important people don't even understand the importance of gender neutral facilities, you know, they don't get why do we have to share the same same bathrooms when there's a male and a female because they have fixed it in their mind, brought up by a very patriarchal and a homophobic society that there's only this and then the the some of them homophobia or queer phobia has been instilled in them that they live by it you know so it 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 it's things like that where we need to um have workshops a uh, have spaces where we're going to speak about it you know because i think we have we know as student leaders that the management does not really care you know so, because they are very much aware of these things. It's not like they do not know that we need more gender neutral facilities, you know. It's not like that they are not aware that people are not comfortable with staying with um 
a specific gender residences. You know, it's not like they are not aware that people prefer certain pronouns. You know, and our, our UCT is making progress in terms of that because, like, they've said that um, there was a, they were they, they a policy has passed that says that people don't have to include their pronouns on their student cards if they do not want to, which is good. Like that's 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 a step forward. But then if you if you I feel like some of the things that they do, they do it so that it will look like they are doing something, you know? Mm. Like for the gender neutral, there's like, there, there's two that I'm aware of. The whole university, there's just two that I'm aware of. And I feel like even them being there, it was a matter of fact to shut, uh, to shut us up and be like, but here they are. But imagine now as a queer person, I have to go to this specific bathrooms whenever I want to use a bathroom because I'm not comfortable with using a gender specific bathroom. You know, and you know, as queer people, it also it 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 exposes you to to a lot of stigma, a lot a lot of discrimination, and and like a danger of 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 hate crime as well when you use this 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 um gender specific gender specific bathrooms because you get into a bathroom and then people will give you funny looks because now they are like no, but you do not belong here, you know. There's a matter of who belongs where, who's supposed to go where. And there was a time where I was, it, it was, I was, it, I had a very long week. So I mistakenly went into a, a, a male only bathroom on campus. It was a big issue that when I, I came out of the bathroom, everyone was just looking, I was not even aware. Cause like, I was just so exhausted that I did not even think about it. It was like the closest that I went inside. When I came out, I'm, I was like, is it something that I'm wearing? What is going on? Until I realized that the bathroom actually it was a male only bathroom, you know? So it's things like that, that people give you, 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 you experience stigma and um, a, a danger of hate crimes for, for being queer and using like um, gender specific um, neutral facilities. But personally, I think like the institutions can do more because I know in New City, we are a privileged um, institution, you know. So what happens in New City does not actually um, give us a clear picture of what's happening in the rest of the institution. It's a specific case, you know. You go to CPUT and you find out there's actually nothing, a nine to zero a bathrooms that, that, that um, are gender neutral, you know. I've had even conversations from people who study in CPUT and UWC and other institutions general that the conversations are not the same, you know. So I believe that it's also it's also um, our responsibility as students in the wide in in the in the privileged universities, as I would put it, to make sure that the conversations are broader than just in our institutions, you know. I feel like it it is it is something that because it is something that we need to 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 look at um outside the the, the institution because at the end of the day we are we are in the institutions but we are a product of, of 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 the society. I mean the 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 institutions of high learning are also part of the society. So probably if our focus is much more on the societal issue and how queer for big the society is it going to, to to rather than being specifically speaking to the varsity student it's also going to, to help us to like um kill too many paid with one stone you know what i'm saying so that's mm. that's just it for me but i really believe that the institutional culture and the institutional space is very exclusive of, of the queer bodies and the members of the LGBTQI. And I feel like we can do much more as the uh, student activists, as well as student leaders, and the conversations, we can spark conversations more than we are doing now. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Amanda. You gave us something quite interesting there is that uh, it's not that management does not know about these things, there's just no political will. And, um, and addressing them is just a matter of, you know, putting it there that no, there's something that we are doing, but there's no actual structural change um, going on in our institutions of higher learning. You know, I want to go back to, um, back to society. Let's take it out of the universities and everything. There was recently uh, the movie in there, but that, uh, that caused a lot of public um, outrage um that you're still here before you leave man just a few comments on about 
how um, culture and, and, and tradition has um, 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 influenced how people respond to um, members of the LGBTQI community. So, but you can't wear a skirt. And what if I'm gender non-conforming and I have to be wearing a skirt, but I feel uncomfortable in this thing. You know, we see a movie about a gay man's, um, you know, um, 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 experiences. Eshatini, next thing, Simona Bantu, who are protesting across the country over a simple movie that's just teaching us about initiation. What are your views on that? Cool. Um, thank you so much. Um, so, I'm an activist. Um, on top of that, I'm also a black conscious feminist. And I am also a person who, who really loves culture at the same time, right? So I, I think then that, that gives a bit of variety to your group of panelists. But for me, firstly, um, I always have this thing that in so many ways, colonization contaminated our culture. So what you always chase as black people that it's our cultures, the way we do things, it's supposed to be like this and like that and like that, right? Most of our traditions, most of them have been, if not all, have been contaminated by colonialism in everything that we practice to this day is not the same as it was practiced back then, right? And the conversation of initiation itself and how it started and how it came to be that young boys and go to initiation and become men is also another conversation that is highly political, right? Because in many cultures, initiation started as a thing of training young boys to be soldiers so that they can go out and fight the colonial, the colonial rule, right? In the wars that were being fought. So it's, it's, it's not only just a very controversial conversation, but it's a conversation that is that is very misunderstood because the facts around it as a political act and also as a cultural and, and a traditional um, act and process can, what do you call it now? Can bad heads a lot. And so it, it becomes a very difficult conversation to have because we have to understand the women cause. I'm, I'm, I'm half closer and some of my roots are, are, are Zulu and Swat. But in understanding the Kosa culture is that we as Zutwini is a very sacred thing that only a few are supposed to know and are supposed to understand, right? Even the young ones that are going to end up going as Zutwini don't know what they will be faced with there should they get there. So, in Maiba in particular, could have been, could have turned out to be a film that would have taught people generally about the experiences of queer people. But at the same time, I feel that in the production of the movie, there should have been an expected backlash in terms of what is going to be the backlash from the communities that actually practice as, 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 as part of their traditions and as part of their culture. There, there should have been somewhat, I, I believe that when, when people make movies or when you write a script, I believe that people do their research in order to understand their stories and to have a more developed storyline that is more real. And I feel that then the producers of Ingaiba and the writers of Ingaiba should have done that too understand more the attachment that people have with their culture and with their traditions, in particular with something that is as sensitive as we are so keen. So for me then, there were those two opposing views which became a really internal conflict for me because I love the idea of having a story, you know, that, that tells the experiences of queer people as so keen. But then at the same time, I, I, I am also of the view that when people believe that their culture should is a sacred thing and is, is, is sanctus and 
it being out there and then removes and takes away from the sanct so from the sanctity of it that should be respected so then it becomes a thing of what outweighs the other and in what ways could that have been mitigated but still make sure that the story is told so i believe the producers of the movie could have done a lot better but at the same time i also believe that members of the public could have done a lot better also and use that as as a moment of teaching and educating right because i understand the resistance i understand the resistance fully you know especially when it comes from a point of this should be a sanctus thing it's sacred not from a homophobic point of view you know because there are also other very homophobic views about gay men being a sutini and all of that like that I, I i don't even want to go in as much and argue with that because that is something that i, I would never go that low because that is just stupid right if someone identifies as a man and their culture allows them to go a sutini then they should and they should be able to tell their experiences as, as they as they wish because they have autonomy over that but i i think that that should have been a moment of learning and of teaching from the people who understand and know the culture and who engage in that sort of culture and traditions to people who don't even understand it that should have been used as such a moment for learning instead of it just being a moment of backlash and a moment of being homophobic and expressing hate for me personally Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that, Tolu. Um, Commissioner, I mean, you, 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 you are a ground force in your own right. You've gone to many provinces in this country, and um, you know, you've been, uh, you've been doing various work with members of the community. How do you think when I see you without Vendela, Engazosi, you know, and and Funuguti? Is our is our band who must join the new club as EFF, but Fanesi is very cautious and at the same time, Fanesi is in the band who we stand for. Yeah, but how do you address the communities we lali, Sisioli, issues that are faced by the, the LGBTQI community? Yenzela is a bias about by understanding in a language um, that will make them understand this because there's a lot of jargon that is difficult to explain uh, in, 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 in queer theory. And Gangela is a mind of a movie away from you know uh, stereotypes that might come with um, certain practices and certain religion. So how do we then navigate that space and 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 you pull me up a balang and now this that will make me feel like I'm a member of this community, irrespective of how I look like or present myself. How do we go about um educating people in, in rural areas and townships about um these various challenges that we are facing. Um, I'm a little confused. I mean, I think if you're talking about uh, what you were talking about with Kulu in terms of Ukwaluko, uh, um, I would say to you that I'm a mom of two boys. Abazokaluka. Um, I was married into a family that accepts Ukaluko as a traditional way of doing things. I'm not going to go against that. Uh, whether I'm a feminist, whether I am an EFF member, I'm not going to go against that. I'm going to allow my children, if Bafonukoluka, Baluk. Uh, but the thing about it is that is to use ukaluko as a measure of manhood. And that is what I have an issue with. Um, at any point that you want to speak, ukaluko nobutota is made as in a way in which you cannot speak as a woman. And um, a woman that is. So I'm not sure about other cultures, but Obukosa Nobudoda is always used to gag. And that is what I'm against. And 
I teach my children all the time. I've got two boys who are 13 and nine that at any point, there's no reason for you to conform to society. There's no reason for you to conform to what people tell you you should do. There's no reason for you to ask a girl out because you are 13 years old. And therefore it means that because you're 13 years old, you should ask a girl out. There's no reason why you should call a feminine boy gay because you think that is derogatory to you because it's not derogatory. Uh, there's no reason to uh, perform societal issues, societal norms because of what they say that you must be. So my point is that um, society does a lot to damage us. And I think as a black people who have assimilated a lot of societal uh, norms, uh, you've assimilated a lot of uh, whitewashed norms. We've assimilated a lot of a um, journey. I, I want to say uh, we've assimilated a lot of jargon of what we think that our people want us to say. Ubu Doda. Ubu Doda is not about talking down about other men. Ubu Doda is maintaining. Ubu Doda is you loving yourself as a man. Ubu Doda is about you as a closer man, being closer. Ubu Tanda. I know closer men to be very loving of their fashion, being very soft-spoken. I know closer men to want their shoes to be very soft and boned and shiny. I know Kosa men to want to speak softly to other women. I know Kosa men to want to not walk into a dirty grass and to a dirty space. That's how I know Kosa men. So for me to understand a Kosa man to be a, a man that is a, a very uh, aggressive, very um, you know, into your face. I don't know a closer man like that. My mom is the last born and she's had three brothers. All three of those brothers have been very soft. The first one was very much feminine in a way that he wanted to have everything around him to be beautiful, smelling nicely, everything to be shiny. The second one, um, I liked his weed, but he was very educated. The third one was asexual. He never liked any woman around him. So I don't know a manhood that is um, aggressive in a way towards me that made me feel uncomfortable. So I teach my children. So my children now are watching a lot of TV. They're watching a lot of Zanzi magic. They're watching a lot of uh, generations. And they think that to be gay, Somizi is gay. Why is Somizi like this? And I'm like, but Somizi is not what gay men are. Somizi is not the end all and be all of what gay men are. Uh, mommy, are you gay? Yes, I am. So it's not about that. It's about teaching um, our children about what we want them to learn. Uh, Ubulugo for me is nothing that is offensive, to be honest. I don't want to lie. Uh, my children are born of a family that believes that you have to go yoga luka. And if that's what they want, that's what they want and that's where they will go. But if my child says to me, mommy, I don't think that ukwaluko is for me. I feel like if I have to cut off my foreskin, whether I'm 34, 40, whenever, that's what I want to do. For me, it's neither here nor there. So um, I think that we need to understand that the, 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 our lives are not measured or are not fathomed 
or aligned to anyone else's life. And I think fighters need to understand the fact that be anti-gay, are you fishing? Are you fishing? And I've seen that when I tweet something gayish, black men will come and bash it because they think that it's a norm. It's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be anti-gay, anti-feminine, anti-whatever. And that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to be who you are. And I want us as EFF men and women to understand the fact that whoever you are, whether you like women, wherever you have feelings, maybe doubt yourself, it's okay. Um, I've been in a position where the first woman I've ever dated, I doubted myself and I thought to myself that, am I being uh, weird? Am I being strange? But at the end of the day, I was just being myself. Um, I see that giving the conversation, uh, which is okay, because she's contributed quite a lot to the conversation. Um, but also I want to say that whatever you feel at the moment, whether you have feelings towards women, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you feel that you have feelings towards men, there's nothing wrong with that. If you have feelings that um, you like this, there's nothing wrong with that. It doesn't mean that when you are then inclined to that. You know what I mean? And that is my, my biggest issue is that fighters are not understanding the manifesto of the EFF. And when you understand the manifesto of the EFF, you understand that the EFF is pro queer people. The EFF, the EFF is pro queer rights. The EFF is pro equality, the EFF is pro-feminist feminist theory, the EFF is pro-transgendered people, the EFF is for everybody. So once you start to understand that, then you understand everything. And that is what I'm trying to teach my children. And I think whilst I'm trying to teach my children that, I'm trying to also teach myself that, but, um, you, you know, sometimes, don't be angry at people reacting in a certain way. I get angry, I become impatient, but don't be. try and be understanding in that you need to teach rather than be angry. And the first reaction is to be angry as black people. We're angry against white people. We're angry against apartheid. We're angry against uh, the, the, the social structure that is um, what, uh, what is it, uh, you know, the private sector. But don't be. Try and teach, try and learn, try and be in the space so that you can then teach through your actions. So that's my contribution, Sia. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Kolisa. I think uh, throughout this conversation, what has been coming up from all our speakers, including you, Amanda, was that gender is more of a, it's more of a social construct. So your sex does not necessarily determine your, your, your behavior. Instead, people learn to behave in particular ways in society. And I think that's, that's something that's very important for us to know is that just because I'm necessarily having XX chromosomes and my sex is um, female, it does not necessarily mean that I'm going to behave in a feminine way. Or it doesn't mean that because you are a man and you are born male, it doesn't mean that you are going to fit in the societal expectations and behave the way men do. I want us to, to wrap up our conversation because there's a lot of things that we um, spoke about so just in conclusion, starting with you, Amanda, how do we think 
we should move forward not only as a you know organization and, and, and as students and youth activists, but generally as a society, how do we move forward, you know, in 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 in, in addressing issues that has to do with the LGBTQI community in a more you know productive way. And I like how 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 Tun puts it, you know, how we are matter of being practical. How do we move practically in changing um our very homophobic society? Um, before I actually conclude, I just want to say something based on what um, Commissar Yoli and Kulu were speaking about. Because if if um, you think of, if you think about culture uh, on its own and uh, how defying culture is seem as if like um, being uncultural, whatever, and then you get rejected by the society, by the community or the family, you know. So I'm, 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 I want us to, to think about this. There's an expert that you often le, le, leave out when you speak about the queer uh, community or the LGBTQR community, the expect of the psychological effect that you have to go through as a, a queer person in the society that we live in, you know, because which is which, 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 which stems to my first point of, of what needs to be done, you know. The first thing that I believe that we need to do is to defy and defy and defy, you know. I I don't know, I don't care about I don't care about the society. Of course I'm a cultural person, but if the culture makes you uncomfortable as a person, then defy the culture, you know. So but then it 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 comes back to the fact that, to the to the matter of the psychological being of a person as well. I mean, we all we all need identity as 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 people. We all need a sense of belonging as people. We need to feel like we belong in in a certain place. We need to feel like we are welcome, and we need to feel comfortable in spaces for the for the uh, for the for the sake of our health as well. You know. But then in 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 a matter of um. I don't know much about Kosa uh, culture, but in a matter of, of our initiation, I am aware that there's 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 a, there's, there's like um, a mis I don't know it's a misconception or whatever that if you did not go to the initiation, then you are not a man enough, you know. And then in that you, in, in when there's MTMB and stuff like that, you you there's like segregation of who eats where who goes where and all of those stuff you know so it's fine we can defy and defy and defy but then we also need that sense of belonging within the community within our family our family structures so then how 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 do we how do we decide whether we defy or we also we it's like a conflict that i just have in my mind how do you do it that you defy but also you make sure that your well-being as a person you you have that sense of belonging and identity and your psychological state it is not much affected you know but um on what needs to be done i do believe that we need to have more of such conversations like we are having right now i feel like one thing that is going to take us forward is speaking about the issues that that are faced by the queer community, you know, we need to speak about it. People need to be aware. We need to conscientize people first. That's where we should start. Because when you start uh, and coming, uh, like uh, uh, it's fine to be solution based, but when you start saying that no, we actually need one, two, three, four as a, as a queer community. We need one, two, three, four as a queer community, but people are actually not even aware of 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 the issues that the queer community community is fight is, is, is fighting or is facing so i think we need to to create more convenient and thank you for creating the space here by the way i need i think we need to create much more of these spaces within the organization within the institutions of high learning as well as within the community uh, uh, at large you know uh, it is it is our duty as as people who are you know there's a, a sense of privilege like there's 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 levels of privilege there's um there's there's levels of oppression so most of the time people are able to 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 react and to be um yo i la hambi but it's fine uh, Kuluma, 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 come 
abantu the bashle you know, and then ba ba. I don't know what is the right in the in the absence of the right way, but to be in in conformity of um the the thinking, the conversations, organe the transformation in conformity of the certain transformation. If certain issues actually do not affect them, you know. For example, the people who are not in the queer community wouldn't understand why do we have to have gender neutral uh, facilities, you know, because there's a, a level of privilege that they have. So I think like we should bring everyone into the conversation. People in the queer community, people outside, we should use the privilege that people have in order for us to make sure that we move forward in terms of transformation generally as a society. And that is on us as student leaders and, and activists generally to make sure that we expand our activism and we make sure that our activism goes beyond just us being in the institutions of piloting. We need to create these conversations at home. From the first, from first of all, make sure that these conversations start. In, we speak about these things at home, you know, because this thing is like a web. You speak to one person, the other person speaks to the other, and the other person speaks to the other. Speak about these things in the community. Like when you're sitting there, just generally in 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 a township, and you are having beer. Obviously, conversations of politics they spike up there and then you end up speaking about black people and whatnot. That's when the conversations of queer people about queer, queer issues uh, need to come in. These things of um, wherever there's, there's, there's a political or um, there's a conversation about so, a social conversation, the conversation about the issues of queer community might, must, must also be there. And I think that is upon us as activism in general. Thank you. Thank you so much, my leader. Yeah, you you are you are right. I mean, as activists, we have a duty, you know, to 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 conscientize and to persuade, and also to learn as well. I mean, there's 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 there's, there's more that we as activists on our own need to learn about. You know, the 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 course, the, course. the 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 queer community. We're still learning; it's an ongoing process. Uh, Commissioner Yoli, um, any closing remarks? from you before I uh, close our session today, which has been a very good one. Um, I think that most of all, we need to have a safe space for queer people. Um, we need to guard against um, abuse against queer people. Um, I think we need to be honest with ourselves as queer people and not be afraid. Um, I do believe that there needs to be a forum of some sort in the EFF uh, that is for queer people, where we know that we belong, where we know that we have people that represent us, where we know that when I have an issue, I'm going to a certain person. Um, it's very, very important to me. Um, I think that we need to protect ourselves as much as we can. I think that we need to fight for ourselves as much as we can. And I think we need to find love. I need to find, we need to find um, solace and we need to not see ourselves as other, but as within and we belong. And there's nothing of an anomaly about being queer in, an, in a political space at all. Um, I believe that we belong just as everybody else belongs. And we need not to fear um, about the spaces that we enter. Um, so that's what, that's what I believe in. And I think that we need to go in there in the space of political uh, fairness with our hearts on our sleeves, with our heads on our heads, and with our hearts in our hearts, and we need to fight for whatever it is that we need to fight for. And we need to understand that there's more than you, Sia, who is a queer woman, man, they, them, whoever, but we need to fight for each other um, in this space. And it needs to be a normalcy that we make happen within not just the EFF, but in all political spaces. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you.
Thank you, Commissar Ioli. Um, before I close off, I just want to, you know, thank um, a gender-based violence desk and the DSG for um, allowing me to chair this important conversation. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time and I'm very grateful for the platform. Um, thank you to our speakers and our panelists as well. Tolu is not here, thank you so much. Commissar Ioli, you're always the best. We always learn from you. Amanda, thank you so much for us. You've been very, um, you know, informative and gave us some rich things to think about, you know, as young people. I think to, 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 to close this off, I just want to say that you are right by saying that as, as queer people, we need to support each other a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, you know, the, the political space can get toxic, you know, for women. And it's, it's, it's even probably worse for, you know, queer women and the, the political space can be, you know, it can be violent sometimes um, to, to working class women and it can be violent sometimes to, to, to queer women as well. So we need to, you know, support each other irrespective of our sexual orientation. No one should pronounce in the name of the EFF that uh, when you are queer, you don't belong here. No one should pronounce in the name of the EFF or the EFF Students Command that um, you are a gay man, feminine man, you don't belong in our space. You know This space and the manifesto as well as the constitution of the EFF, it makes it clear that the EFF is for everyone, including um, members of the LGBTQI community. And yes, I get that um, you know, representation matters. You know, we need more representation of, of queer people in, in various structures, be it in the students' command, be it in, in parliament, in, 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 in you know, our councillors, in our communities, um, our leaders in the branch level, provincial and regional levels. We need the representation of queer people. And you know, the only way we can make queer people join the EFF more is if us as queer people in the EFF are vocal about our policies are supporting each other and we are you know together in trying to make uh, south africans realize the importance of economic freedom in our lifetime so um i also like how you said uh, uh Yule, and maybe it's something that we need to discuss you know as an organization i heard you say and you'll correct me if i'm wrong we as eff women need to have our own pride you know having our own pride as EFF women, you know, what does what does what does uh, being queer and an EFF member look like? You know, we must not be ashamed of of, of being members of this um, mass based mass based movement. Sorry, we mustn't be afraid of being queer in this mass based movement. And 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 the EFF, as much as people want to, you know, portray it as a a, a masculine and a space that is, you know, a uh, uh, um, dominated by a lot of men, the EFF actually has, uh, you know, improved in terms of gender disparity and it improved in terms of having more women in its spaces, queer people are more vocal about uh, being members of the EFF. And those are kind of things that we need to also pat ourselves in the shoulder for, Commissar, because we as queer people have been working and we have been, uh, you know, recruiting and, 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 and raising awareness about economic freedom. So as members of the LGBTQI community, we do the, um, deserve a, a hand clap and a you know, pat on the shoulders for our work in building this movement and we should carry on. I mean, EFF, it's always like that EFF is a school, you know, we're constantly learning in the EFF. I think we should carry on, uh, you know, educating ourselves, educating our members and, 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 and educating uh, people in structures, officials, about um, LGBTQI rights and um, you know um, challenges that are being faced by um, the LGBTQI community and members of the LGBTQI in the EFF. You know, so as much as we want to change our society, we also want to you know um, be intersectional in our movement. Uh, yeah. With that said, I want to once again thank the gender-based violence desk. Um, carry on with this beautiful work. Let us keep conscientizing our people. And thank you once again to um, my panelists.